This is an interview with Nobutatsu Takahashi-san from Sony, the man in charge behind the Sony Cinema line. Cinity, your digital cinema tech resource, supported by B&H and CVP. Hi, this is Nino from Cinity here at IBC 2022, and I'm very happy to be here at the Sony stand with Nobu-san. How are you? Good, how are you? Very good indeed. It's a very busy show. It's, I think, very successful. It's nice to be back to meet people here. So, yes, Mm -hmm. very good. Mm -hmm. So, you are responsible for the cinema line in Sony. Maybe you can explain to our audience a little bit what what is your role. Mm -hmm. Uh, My role is the business manager for the cinema line products and series. Very interesting. I myself am a Cinema Line user. I own an FX9. We have an FX6 as well at the office. So uh, very interesting uh, to talk to you about the philosophy behind it. I mean, FS7 was a very successful camera. Um, also used for many, many years. And uh, now the Cinema Line, of course, has expanded mm-hmm. over the years. Where do you see? I know that from an organizational standpoint. Um, I think Sony in itself now moved the departments closer together. Is that right? Like the Alpha team, and you see a lot of influence from the Alpha cameras in the cinema line. What, what can you tell me about how this works? Yeah, actually, uh, the Alpha team and the cinema camera team has been uh, one team right now. And then we have the cinema line uh, products series has been, has a very top, on the top end, we have the Cine Alta which is the Venice and Venice 2, which is the cinema camera uh, used in the cinema production. And then we have FX9, FX6, and FX3. Today, uh, we have a FR7, a new product, and that's the all one team. FR7, we already uh, reported about. We also had a edit at the office. Uh, is quite interesting. So it's basically an FX6 uh-huh. on, a, on a PTZ head, right? Uh-huh. What, what was the idea behind this? We want to exp- extend the cinematic expression to the other uh, usage, other productions, like a live production, sports production, and music TVs, and that's the idea of the concept. Um, I have to say, you know, there's one, usually, you know, like I see, we see a camera for the first time, we form our opinions, we do a review, um, and sometimes we get it right, sometimes we get it wrong. Uh, when I saw the FX3 for the first time, a bit skeptical, very similar to the A7S3, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. but I think the way it was received by the market was extremely good. I see it's popping up everywhere. A lot of people are using it and a lot of rental houses are using it. So what is your experience? Do you see some overlap of the people who are, for example, using the A7S3 versus the FX3? Or is this a different, is it really different people that are using it? Uh-huh. Yes and no. There's some overlap, I think, but uh, look and operability is the main concept for the cinema line. So even for the FX3. So the operational side is totally different from the FX3 uh, to the A7, Alpha 7S3. So people are choosing FX3. It's more like a film production type of people who wants to uh, operate through like a cinematic uh, operation. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's why the people who love filming, film production, will choose, yeah. is picking of FX3. Mm-hmm. I, I, it was quite surprising actually, this mm-hmm. firmware update that you gave the oh, FX3 yeah. recently yeah. actually gave it a lot more functions that yeah. I think people were not expecting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Exactly. yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. Is there any plan that you can share to do this also with the A7S3? Because a lot of people are using the A7S3, of course. Everybody, if everybody wants, yeah, we, we need to think about it. Because we are the company who uh, that listen to the customers. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. I think I think it's a good idea. You know, A7S3 is everywhere and it's used being used so much. Very reliable camera, very, very good in low light, of okay. course. Yeah. And uh, it's definitely something that a lot of people have asking, have been asking us about uh-huh. if the same or similar updates will come to this camera. We yeah. only uh, listen to customers, creators, so we are always with the creators. Mm-hmm. Yeah. One of the things that is really, for me, always setting apart the Sony professional cameras from other manufacturers is the electronic variable ND filters okay. in the FX6 and the FX9, yes. Um, 
we know it's difficult to achieve and I know you probably can't share anything about unannounced things, but just in general, um, a lot of people would love to see an electronic variable ND or any kind of ND in a smaller body, mirrorless body, because nobody has managed to do this and it would be something that, do you think it's technically impossible or is it something that could come? Uh, I will say in the future, nothing is impossible. So uh, engineer, our engineer will not stop the development. So I think in the future, if the customer wants and the, if the technology develops, and then there's a one day that we can have those features within the small body, I think, yeah. Huh? Um, everything is moving more towards, you know, camera manufacturers, everybody feel, especially on the low end competition from smartphones because of course we know that compact cameras have kind of disappeared. There's not so many in the market anymore. Um, and computational uh, um, photography and cinematography is on the rise. And uh, where do you see the, the, you know, the role that Sony can take and software in general can take in the future with future models? Because we feel like it's, it's often the software that now uh, enhances a lot of the functions, whether it's of, of phones, but also of cameras. There's so much that can be done with software. Mm -hmm. uh, it is interesting yeah. because uh, computational power is becoming much, much stronger and stronger. So I think in the roadmap, the movie production, uh, commercial production should use, is going to use the, those powers. Yeah to create a new uh, way of filmmaking. So I think those combination, hardware, software combination, that makes the future production. Okay. So I think there's a lot of way, yeah. not just implementing those software within the camera, but together with the uh, editing software, we can use, utilize uh, the data yeah. that has been captured by camera by, uh, at the nonlinear editing. Yeah. So I think there's a lots of possibilities Great. to uh, use, utilize the power of computational uh, cinematography. Mm -hmm. I think also the way, one thing I like about the Alpha series is the, the way how you can transfer photos to your phone very easily with Wi-Fi. Uh, and I think there is, there is going to be more and more demand of actually also transferring uh, video footage to various devices wirelessly without actually, you know, whether it's to the cloud like you have or uh, even directly to end uh, phones or, or tablets. Yeah, uh, the FR7, the PTZ uh, full frame interchangeable lens camera that we have been launched, it can use a um, tablet web application that can be, uh, that can be uh, used within the tablet to control the camera, monitor the camera, multiple camera, and then uh, multiple monitoring for the tablet. So that combination uh, is one of the solutions that we are uh, giving to the customers. Now that you mentioned the FR7, I have one question that some people also asked us when we reported about the camera. Now it's, you have amazing autofocus tracking, face tracking, um, animal tracking, also functionality in the FX6 Ace, Ace Alpha series. Um, some people asked us whether the face tracking can be combined with the PTZ component, like the pan and tilt, because I think right now, the way it is, it can track the face, but as soon as it loses the frame, you will have to manually reframe. If, if, the, if the pan and tilt can actually be combined with this, almost like a surveillance camera, if you will, that is face tracking, uh, I think they're you know, there is some need for this. What, what do you think? Is this something that is possible with a f software update? Uh, software update? Uh, it can be. It can be. Uh, right now, we don't have it. But yeah. uh, again, we listen to the customers. So uh, if the need is very big, yeah. then and the technology comes up, yeah. and then we can uh, have those products. Nice. Yeah. And uh, last question, I guess. Um, the FX9 and the Venice, the FX9 is not really a successor to the FS7, but it is in a similar price range, a little bit higher. We used to have the F5, F55, which is kind of like in between the F65 and 
the FS7. Yeah. So, um, do you think there is still a market for like an in-between camera between FX9 and Venice 2, or is this something where you say, well, it's either high-end or it's you know FX9? What's your point on this? I think there's a market. Uh, I've been hearing from the rental houses and creators that there is a market. Uh, expanding uh, because of the like OTT production streamers is becoming a lot more popular so there's a lots of creators shooting those high-end contents and then we think we there is a market uh, for those creators okay. mm -hmm. yeah that's interesting because it's there's a bit of a gap and it's curious to see oh, if, yeah. if something will come. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah so very last question, maybe yeah. just uh, in general, uh, you know, maybe the you want to share something about the philosophy of where the cinema line is headed from here on out. Yeah, uh -huh. uh, cinema line is the, not just the lineup or the cameras. It's not just the hardware, but it's more like a commitment of Sony uh, Corporation that we want to work together with the creators because we listen to the creators and then we want to make together uh, the new way of filmmaking. So that's the kind of commitment from ourselves. So it's not the cinema line will grow together with the creators. We learn a lot. There's a lot of engineers within Sony cinema line and then they're eager to listen to the customers and they want to develop the technology. So those two, technology by Sony and creative for the creators, those two combines makes the new uh, filmmaking for the future. That's the cinema line kind of concept and the commitment. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that. And I, I can confirm, I think also, you know, our audience uh, that Sony is really listening to feedback. I, it's so often that we talk about things and then it shows up in the next camera. That was always nice. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Nobu-san, for the time. Thank you so Thank much. You, you know. yeah. And thanks everybody for watching. Stay tuned to Synity for a lot more from IBC 2022 and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel.